All right, hi Trailblazers. This is one of the last videos we're going to watch before we have our quiz on, um, you know, scientific investigations and scientific inquiry. So pay close attention. This kind of wraps it up. The next video is about scientific or independent and dependent variables um, because it's, I just think everybody sometimes needs all the help they can get when talking about variables. That seems to be the weakest um, point of understanding for most students. All right, so we really don't use the set scientific method anymore. Instead, we use scientific inquiry. Scientific inquiry is you just gather evidence about the natural world and you try to explain what you see and what you experience. So the first one is, yeah, you have to have observed something that made you curious. So you're curious about something, then you ask a question. Once you've asked that question, why is the sky blue, then you need to be able to define... Um, to make a hypothesis on on that question and then you have to be able to test it. So a hypothesis is a possible answer to a scientific question. Maybe my hypothesis is the sky is blue because um, that's where Smurfs go when they die and Smurfs are blue. Can I test that? Yeah, no, that's a really bad hypothesis. Instead, a good hypothesis would be like if um, if wavelengths of light are refracted in the atmosphere, then blue wavelengths of light are refracted the most. That might be a really good one. That's not a fact. It's an, instead just a possible answer to my question of why is the sky blue. You must be able to test the hypothesis. So hypotheses must be testable. Um, and then my data from my observation or my investigation either supports my hypothesis or fails to support it. This is the one part in any class it's okay to be wrong. So if your hypothesis is wrong, you learn just as much information as if your hypothesis was correct. All right, so the parts of your hypothesis contain your variables. And so just let, let me go like this for a second because you can't read it in my uh, other slide. So the independent variable is the factor that is purposely changed to test the hypothesis hypothesis. So this is a condition we're going to be studying. So if I want to know how uh, how much water do plants need to grow or how, what, how much, what is the best amount of water to get the maximum plant growth, what I change is not anything but the amount of water I give my plants. Now what depends on the amount of water? Plant growth. So independent variable is my one that I change. My dependent variable, I can't control that. I can just measure it. In a controlled experiment, this is when in, uh, only one variable is changed at a time, and this is my independent variable that I change, and I always have a control. I always have something that I'm um, comparing my uh, change to. I think I can put this back up now. Okay. So my next one is when I write my hypotheses, I want to start my sentence with the word if. So in my if part of my sentence, I would write this down. That's where the independent variable always goes. If, um, if plants are affected, if plant growth is affected, sorry, if water affects plant growth, what am I changing? Amount of water. Okay. If part contains my independent variable. My then part contains my dependent variable. So a good way to write that hypothesis might be if water is related to plant growth, then the more you water plants, the bigger they will get grow. Or if you run with scissors, then you might get hurt. Running with scissors is what you're changing. Uh, what depends on running with scissors, you getting hurt. All right, let's talk about bias for a minute. Bias is an error in the design ex of the experiment. There's three types of bias. There's personal bias. That's just how you personally feel about something or someone. So personal bias gets in the way a lot with observational um, studies because, um, you know, it's really hard to keep our personal bias. Cultural bias is another one. This is, just depends on the culture we grew up in. Um, and so that can affect... Again, observational studies. And the last type is the type we'll run into the most often in the lab, and that's a, a experimental bias. And that's where um, you design the experiment wrong. And so this is where we get conflicting reports about things. Like one day, um, you know, one day they might say coffee's good for adults, and the next day they're going to say coffee's bad for adults. It's because when those scientists create their studies, they might have um, designed the experiment incorrectly, and so it's going to give really bad data. 
So we have to be careful. We have to control all the variables. And we don't, um, we should never discard a sample because we don't like the results. You have to report all the results. Okay, so the next is collecting and interpreting data. So data are just all the facts, figures, and other information that we collect through qualitative and quantitative observations. I, I noted this a lot for you eighth graders in your uh, qualitative and quantitative polling assignment. You didn't give me a data chart. You have to give me a data chart. Um, I don't know where that data comes from if you don't give me a data chart. After you collect the data, then that's where you interpret it. And that's where you either make a diagram, a model, or a graph to make sense of that data. Why do we do all that? Not because Ms. Marshall's mean, but because that's how we see the patterns or trends that might come from that data. All right. Drawing conclusions. Uh, drawing a conclusion is really the summary of what you learn from an experiment. It either supports or fails to support the hypothesis. In this, you must be sub or, excuse me, objective. And remember from seventh grade, there's two types of thinking in science. There's objective and subjective. Objective means you have an open mind. You don't let bias cloud your decisions. Subjective is when bias does influence what you're saying. So we always want to be objective. A good experiment, um, you should have had repetition, so you don't just do it one time, you do it many times to see if your results are not only accurate, but are they reproducible. What if you did it once and then you try to do it again and you didn't get the same results? You probably had some experimental bias in that first trial. Remember, it's okay when your hypothesis is wrong. You still get a ton of information. Then most of the time, scientists in their career study one or two things, and they spend years studying one or two things. That They're constantly, they do an experiment, they don't get the results they want, they change their hypothesis and go down a new path. That is how scientific inquiry works. All right, most scientists are going to use literary um, ways to communicate their results. So, I mean, back in the day, I mean, they still make, publications like magazines. They're called journals, scientific journals. They look like magazines. They still make them, but a lot of this is online now. So scientists will buy an online subscription to these peer-reviewed journals, and that's where they learn about all the new things that are happening in the scientific community. Um, it's really important that when they communicate their results, that they're their studies can be replicated because if I say that I have the cure for cancer in New Zealand and they try to replicate my um, experiment in South Korea and they can't, well, I'm going to look like a, you know, an idiot. So we have to have replicatable um, procedures to give us the same information. All right. So scientific explanations are just pretty much drawing conclusions from an experiment um, and it's a generalization that makes sense of an observation by logical reasoning so if you're talking about your CER method that we practiced the other day in class this would be your reasoning okay this would be the reasoning piece your evidence would be the data the scientific explanation would be the reasoning piece of the CER method so why are frogs my question might be like why are frogs uh, falling through the sky I might say my claim is my hypothesis. <clears throat> if uh, violent storms sweep frog larvae from uh, rivers and streams, then when it rains, uh, or uh, it sweeps them up into the atmosphere, then when it rains, those frogs will come back to earth. My evidence might be that I go out and I collect data in the middle of a storm and see frog larvae being whipped up into the higher parts of the atmosphere. And then after a particularly nasty storm, I might observe frogs falling from the sky, and then I might go count and collect data on those frogs. All right, so your assignment, and I'm going to do it like this again so you can see the whole screen. So you might want to pause this for a minute and write it down. This is all a fictional thing. You guys are going to observe, you are, the question is, here's your, here's your question. You see that people who use freckle juice, which is really just lemon water, have lighter freckles. That's your problem. I just did number one for you. From that, you want to, number two, make a hypothesis. Remember to put it in the if-then format, and the if format should be um, your independent variable. The, the then format, sh or the then part, should have the dependent variable. Um, and then you want to design an experiment. So you make a procedure, 
Don't forget to identify the independent variable, the dependent variable, and the controls. Then you want to analyze data. So this is fictional. You're going to make a data chart. You're going to graph it. You want to base this on 100 people. And I want a real colored graph on graph paper. And then draw a conclusion. Again, this is fictional. You guys are making this up. Is your hypothesis correct? So this is due to me. Um, let's say this is due on Friday. So this is due on Friday, the Friday before our long weekend. Um, and then just to reiterate what a uh, graph and chart look like, this is a data chart, so you need some kind of data chart, and then you need some kind of graph. And this is just data that I made up, obviously, um, and then I did, I did base this off 100 people. So this is kind of something that you guys could use to, to base it. And remember, this is due uh, Friday of this week. Um, you can go back and review any of this if you have any questions. I'll see you guys in class. Bye.